everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today for this class. My name is Katie Earle and I'm the coordinator of the University Express program and I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. I'm joined here virtually today with Ryan Gadzo. I would like to thank the sponsors of our University Express program, our Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Celsior Orthopedics and Wegmans because they help make this program possible. And we wanna let you know that Senior Services is there for you. So if you have questions about services, supports or benefits, please give us a call. We'll be happy to help you however we can. Our general phone number is 716-858-8526. Without further ado, let's learn about the star of our show today. Ryan Gadzo currently serves as the research analyst for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. He has both a bachelor's and master's degree from Buffalo State College in political science and public administration, respectively. Ryan is a fantasy sports enthusiast and Bill's season ticket holder for over five years. He will combine his love of research and sports in this engaging presentation. I will turn it over to Ryan and we will learn from him. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, like Katie said, my name is Ryan. I work in the program development and evaluation for Erie County Department of Senior Services as the research analyst. Um, if any of you have attended my sessions, it's a lot of information and I do speak very quickly. I'm gonna try to slow down as we are recording today. So um, this is just gonna be an overview of some famous sports figures from baseball, basketball, football, and hockey that have grown up right here in our own backyard in the 716. Um, so I'm just gonna go through, I'm not claiming to be an expert at any one of these people's lives. I just wanted some fun facts and overviews of their careers and uh, just some stuff to talk about. So first and foremost, our first sports figure is Ron Jaworski. Ron Jaworski was born in Lackawanna on March 23rd in 1951. He played his high school football at Lackawanna High School. During that time, he was nicknamed Rifle Ron or the Polish Rifle. During his senior year of high school, Ron Jaworski turned down an MLB contract with the Cardinals to attend the Youngstown State to play football. Um, uh, Ron Jaworski was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams in the second round of the 1973 draft. The funny thing about that is most people remembered Ron Jaworski as a Philadelphia Eagle. In 1977, the Eagles and Saint, or Los Angeles Rams traded players illegally, because at that time there was no free agency. It was all contracts and no contracts. So actually Ron Jaworski and the tight end all, uh, all um, pro, Charles Young, were traded for each other, even though both were under contract. But the league turned a blind eye, and Ron Jaworski ended up a Philadelphia Eagle. Um, Ron Jaworski would go on to play for the Eagles from 1977 to 1986, and would be voted to the Pro Bowl in 1980, along with winning the NFC Player of the Year and the Burt Bell Award. After his time in Philadelphia, he'd be to play as the backup for the Miami Dolphins and Kansas City Chiefs, where he would retire. After retiring, um, Ron Jaworski became a broadcaster and analyst for ESPN, where he got the nickname Jaws, and he was there until 2017. Um, since retiring in 1990, Ron Jaworski has also been very involved in the Arena Football League in various capacities. Ron Jaworski was the owner of the Philadelphia Soul, Albany Empire, and Atlantic City Blackjacks, as well as was the chairman of the executive committee for the league. Um, now that he is no longer on ESPN and broadcasting, he is managing and supervising golf courses throughout New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Our next um, person from the 716, who is a famous sports figure, is none other than James Starks. James Starks was born in Buff or born in Niagara Falls on February 25th, 1986. James attended Niagara Falls High School and ran for 1,048 yards and threw for over 600 yards in his senior season. Fortunately for 
all the rest of college football. The only scholarship he received was to the University at Buffalo. During his three seasons, uh, James Stark rushed for 340 yards and scored over 40 touchdowns, including back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Um, unfortunately, a shoulder inj- injury kept him playing his senior season. Um, that probably also led to this. Um, drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the sixth round of the 2010 NFL Draft. Probably that senior season maybe cost him some, some uh, draft roundage there and being going higher. But during his rookie season playing for the Green Bay Packers, he was able to set the rookie playoff game rushing record against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, that was, uh, he rushed for over 123 yards during that game. Um, and um, later that season, he would go on to win the Super Bowl uh, 45 as a Green Bay Packer. That was Aaron Rodgers also super, on the Super Bowl win. Um other accolades for James Starks during his career. He also set the career rushing record at UB. Um, also, unfortunately, 2016 was kind of the, the beginning of the end for James Starks' NFL career. Well, while suffering the death of a close family member, he was injured in a car accident that led to him being placed in concussion protocol, and he would be released by the Packers prior to the 2017 season. All right, our next person we want to talk about is baby Joe Macy, our local heavyweight. Baby Joe was born in Tonawanda on November 27th, 1973. Baby Joe went to high school at Sweet Home High School and actually did not start his boxing career until after high school at the age of 19. Um, In 1996, he was selected as an Olympic alternate for the U.S. team in the in boxing in the heavyweight division. Um, in 1999, he became the New York State heavyweight champion by defeating Anthony Green by a technical knockout in the eighth round. In 2003, he became the North American Boxing Federation heavyweight champion by defeating Robert Davis with a technical knockout in the first round. Um, after battling injuries and overcoming them in 2004, in 2007, Baby Joe became the World Boxing Council's United States National Boxing Committee heavyweight champion by defeating Shannon Miller with a technical knockout in the first round. Um, just a little background about that injury. It was believed that Baby Joe did suffer a subdural hematoma while fighting Vasily Yurov. Um, he had, was knocked out but end up winning that fight by decision um, at the end of it. During this time, um, to go to different states to be sanctioned, because Nevada at the time after his injury would not sanction him to fight. So he had to um, kind of go through all these tests and go to different states in order to be re-sanctioned, which came in, in, in his reinstatement came in 2006. Um, um, after um, retiring um, in 2008, he attempted a New York State Senate run to fill the seat vacancy left by Mary Lou Rapp. Um, he did secure the Democratic nomination for the seat, but was defeated by Michael Rasenhofer. Um, over his career, baby Joe Macy went 36-0 and professionally, winning 29 fights by the way of knockout and seven by the way of decision. Um, in 2018, he was inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame and also the New York State Boxing Hall of Fame. And he currently works now for Abbott Medical as a medical supply salesman. The next athlete we're going to talk about may be one of the most polarizing athletes in sports history, especially in terms of basketball. We're going to talk about the much hated or much loved Christian Leitner. Um, Christian Leitner was born in Angola on August 17th, 1969. Um, He attended Nichols High School in the city of Buffalo, playing basketball. During his years, he scored over 2,000 points, setting the record for the school in terms of point scoring, and they ended up winning back-to-back state titles. After um, playing at Nichols, he would attend Duke, also winning back-to-back national championships. 
He was named the NCAA Player of the Year in 1992. He was named the ACC Player of the Year twice in 1991 and 1992. He was a first-team All-American in 1992, as well as ACC Player of the Year in 1991. And there's a bunch of other basketball awards that were in there that I didn't want to get down into the minutia about. Um, what was funny was between drafted and being um, – in playing college, he was actually the only collegiate athlete selected to the 1992 Dream Team that represented the USA at the Summer Olympics. Um, so while he was doing that, he was actually drafted third overall by the Timberwolves in 1992. During that season, he would go on to make the All-NBA Rookie Team, as well as become a one-time NBA All-Star in 1997. Um Unfortunately, Christian Leitner's basketball career was not nearly as good as his college career. Um, he would go on to play for six NBA teams in total, and none of them for more than three seasons. He ended up playing for the Miami Heat, Minnesota Timberwolves, Wizards, Atlanta Hawks, Detroit Pistons, and the Dallas Mavericks. Um, one thing, though, is 32, has been retired by Duke, and like I said, has gone on to be one of the most controversial sports figures in history. Also, locally, he does um, Christian Leitner basketball camp at Nichols every summer. All right. So now we're going to switch over to some older athletes who came before my time. And the first one we're going to talk about is Warren Spahn. Warren Spahn was born in Buffalo on April 23rd, 1923. Um, he enlisted in the U.S. Army after the minor league baseball season in 1942. He returned to the major leagues after World War II at the age of 25. One thing that a lot of people don't know about Warren Spahn is during his time serving in the Army, he received um, not only service with distinction, but also a Purple Heart um, for action um, that he saw both at the Battle of the Bulge and the Ludendorff Bridge as a combat engineer and was also received a battlefield commission for his um, his engagement in combat. Once he returned to the um, he pitched left-handed and played for the Boston and Milwaukee Braves for all but one of his 20-plus seasons. During his time, he would go on to be named a 17-time All-Star won the Cy Young and World Series in 1957, was the NL leader in ERA, which is earned runs against as the lowest pitcher three times. He was the NL leader in strikeouts four, and he was also the NL leader in wins eight times throughout his career. He would go on to throw two no-hitters and notch 13 20-win seasons. Um, he was named to the MLB's All-Century team as the Inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1973. He ranked six all time in wins behind Cy Young, Walter Johnson, Grover Cleveland Alexander, Christy Mathewson, and Pud Galvin. Um, many believe that he would be third all time in wins if he did not choose his country in World War II. And his number 21 has been retired by the Atlanta Braves. And lastly, he ranked second all times for home runs by pitchers with 35 and first in the National League history with 35. Um, the league leader has 37. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Speaking to baseball and athletes who were born before I was alive, <laughs> the next person we're going to talk about is Sal McGill. He was born in Niagara Falls on April 26, 1917. Um, one thing about Sam McGill is he was he broke into the Major League Baseball in 1945, but actually jumped into the Mexican League prior to the 1946 season. Um, because of this jump into the um, Mexican League, Lee was banned from the MLB until 1949 and chose to return to the New York Giants in 1950. 
Um, he earned the nickname Sal the Barber because he liked to throw high and inside to back batters off the plate, which means the pitch was coming right about their chin level. Um, upon returning to the league in 1950 with the New York Giants, he would win the World Series in 1954. He was named a two time All Star, was the NL ERA leader in 1950, and had the most National League wins in 1951 and even pitched a no-hitter in 1956. And one thing they cannot take away from Sal is he is the only player to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers, New York Giants, and New York Yankees. Next athlete we're going to talk about is Buffalo Bob Lanier. Bob was born in Buffalo on September 10th, 1948. He attended Bennett High School, where he played basketball and would go on to be named the, to the All-City team his junior year and the All-Western New York State team in his senior year. Bob was rejected by Canisius College due to his grades being too low, and even after being recruited by over 100 schools to play basketball, he chose St. Bonaventure so his parents could watch him play. Um, as a sophomore in college, he helped the Bonnies to an undefeated regular season in 1968 and 1969. And in his senior season, he would help the Bonnies to an NCAA Final Four berth, but they lost in that Final Four game after he injured his knee in the previous game. His number, 31, has been retired by St. Bonaventure University. Lanier was drafted. First overall by the Detroit Pistons in 1970 NBA draft, but during that time was also a territorial pick by the American Basketball Association's New York Nets in 1969. He would go on to choose to play for the Pistons, because that was before, prior to the National Basketball Association and American Basketball Association's merger, very similar to what happened with the NFL and the AFL. Um, he would go on to make the NBA All-Rookie Team in 1971, be an eight-time NBA All-Star, and have his number 18 retired by both the Pistons, or number 16 retired by both the Pistons and the Bucks. Um, throughout his life, Bob Rainier has been a huge contributor to the communities he resides in. Since 1978, he's been recognized with the following awards. In 1978, he was selected by the Professional Basketball Writers Association as a, recip as a recipient of the J. Walter Kent Kennedy Award for Outstanding Community Service. In 1981, he won the YMCA Organization um, Jackie Robinson Award, which is given for service to youth, citizenship, and leadership. In 1984, he was awarded the Oscar Robertson Award, as well as an inducted um, as Oscar Robertson Award. In 1991, he was inducted into the Buff Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Um, um, in 1992, Lanier was enshrined in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. In 2000, Lanier was the recipient of the Congressional Horizon and Leadership Award presented by the Joint Leadership Commission of the United States Congress and the Board of Directors of the Congressional Award Foundation, which is presented to individuals who have made an exceptional impact on the lives of young American people. In 2006, Lanier was inducted to the College Basketball Hall of Fame. In 2007, Lanier received the National Civil Rights Museum Sports Legacy Award. Um, he was awarded for his significant contribution to civil and human rights internationally in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, in 2007, St. Bonaventure named their um, basketball court Bob Lanier Court. In 2009, he was the co-recipient of the Manny Jackson Basketball's Human Spirit Award. Um, which is awarded by the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in recognition of passion for the game of basketball and continued commitment to the community service. So he was not only a great basketball player, but quite the humanitarian. 
The next person on this list sticking with basketball is Cliff Robinson. Cliff Robinson was born on December 10th, 1966. Um, he attended Riverside High School. Graduated a year after my mom. He went to the University of Connecticut and played four seasons there. Um, in his senior season, UConn would go on to win the NI team tournament, and he was named to the all-tournament team. Um, he was selected by the Portland Trail Blazers in the 1989 NBA draft as a 36th overall pick. He would play eight seasons for the team, making the playoffs in every one, and even, even making it to the NBA Finals in 1990 in 1992. He was named the NBA Sixth Man of the Year in 1993 and would be named an all-star in 1994. He would go on to have an Iron Man consecutive game streak of 461 games in his career. And he was a contestant on the 28th season of the CBS So Survivor coming in 14th place. And in 2007, UConn retired his number double zero. The next person we're going to talk about is Hockey player Patrick Kane. Funny fact is me and Patrick Kane share the same birthday. He was born on November 19th, 1988 in Buffalo, and I was born November 19th, 1990 in Buffalo. Um, Patrick played for the USA National Develop Under-18 team where he broke the record um, held by Phil Kessel, scoring 102 points during the 2005-2006 season. Um, Patrick played at his junior hockey for the London Knights, scoring 145 points in the 2006-2007 season. Um, he was drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks first overall in the 2007 NHL entry draft. In 2008, he would win the Calder Trophy, um, besting his teammate Jonathan Taves for the honor of best rookie that season. During his time with the Chicago Blackhawks, he has won three Stanley Cups in 2010, 2013, and 2015. Some other awards that Patrick Kane has um, won over the years. He won the Conn Smythe Award in 2013 as the MVP of the playoffs. In 2016, he won the Art Ross Award because he was the league points leader. The Hart Memorial Award as most valuable player to their team and the 10 Lindsay Award, which is the most outstanding player, which is voted upon by the NHL Players Association. So all the players voted him the, the, the most outstanding player that season. On January 19th, this, this year, 2020, Patrick Kane became the youngest American player to reach 1,000 points, joining former Blackhawks Stan Makita, Bobby Hall, and Dennis Savard. Um, up until last year, Patrick Kane actually spent his off seasons in Hamburg in a house that he built for him and his parents, but that recently sold. Um, so that's that on Patrick Kane. Also, there are huge Imperial pizza enthusiasts. Our next person is going to be Nick Felino, the more accomplished but non saber playing Felino brothers. Um, Nick was born in Buffalo on October 31st, 1987. His father is former Buffalo Sabres, Mike Foligno. Um, Nick played for through his father for the Ontario Hockey League Sudbury Wolves. He played there for three seasons, totaling 38, 70, and 88 points in each season, respectively. In 2006, he was drafted 28th overall by the Ottawa Senators. He would play for the team until 2012 when he was traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Mark Mathot. Um, he was selected to his only NHL All-Star game in 2015. Um, he was awarded the Mark Messier Leadership Award for superior, as a superior leader on a team and contributing member of society. Um, he won the King Clancy Memorial Trophy for best exemplifying leadership on and off the ice and has made a significant humanitarian contribution to his community, and both of those were in 2017. Our next figure is Moose or Marcus Felino. He was born in Buffalo on August 10th, 1991. His father is also former Buffalo Sabre Mike Felino. 
He was also drafted to the Sudbury Wolves of the Ontario Hockey League. He would play for the team and his father for four seasons, totaling points of 11, 30, 39, and 59, respectively. Uh, Marcus was drafted by the Buffalo Sabres, 104th overall in the 2009 entry draft. Um, he broke the family tradition of wearing the number 17 or 1 and 7 and chose to wear 82. His brother Nick wears um, number 71 for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, he was traded to the Minnesota Wild with Tyler Ennis in return for um, defenseman Marco Scandella, Jason Palmonville, and a fourth round pick. Like I said, he was nicknamed Moose. His best season came in 2016 and 2017 with the Sabres, where he scored 23 points with 13 goals and 10, 10 assists in 80 games. Um, he was also named the NHL Rookie of the Month in March 2012, where he had 13 points in his first 14 games as a Sabre. Our next, um, our next, uh, athlete is going to be Rob Gronk Gronkowski, which since the making of this presentation is now unretired from the NBA or NBA, the NFL. Um, Gronk was born in Amherst on May 14th, 1989. He attended Williamsville, Williamsville North High School for three years before transferring to Woodland High School outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. After playing um, for Woodlands, he was given a scholarship and attended the University of Arizona, playing there for three seasons, and even being put on the Lombardi watch list before being injured and missing his junior season. Um, he was drafted by the New England Patriots in the second round, 42nd overall in the 2010 entry draft. Um, Gronk was a three-time Super Bowl champion with New England. Um, while holding the single season touchdown record for a tight end with 18. He is the only tight end to lead the league in receiving in 2011. And the he was the first tight end to have three 10 plus touchdown and thousand yard seasons. He's gone on to act in series such as The Masked Singer, Family Guy, and the movie Entourage. Since retiring, and unretiring, he has appeared in the WWE and is currently holds the 24-7 championship belt in the company. So with that being said, you may see a someone come challenge for his uh belt at halftime of a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Um and our last um person athlete from Western New York um is Daryl also Moose. Johnston. Um, Daryl Johnston was born in Youngstown on February 10th, 1966. He attended Lewport High School and was named Western New York Player of the Year in 1983. And with Lewport, they would win their division in football in 1984. After graduating from Lewport, he played football as a fullback for Syracuse University and went on to be named to the All Big East team in 1987 and be named an All-American in 1988. After um, leaving college, he was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the second round, 39th overall in the 1989 NFL entry draft. He played in 147 consecutive games while scoring 22 touchdowns and being named the first fullback to the Pro Bowl in 1993 in 1994. Um, the NFL actually added the fullback position to the Pro Bowl roster because of the production of uh, Moose Johnston. Um, there was never a position on the Pro Bowl teams for fullback, and he kind of revolutionized the position, paving the ways um, for some of the, the bigger fullbacks we've seen throughout the late 90s, early 2000s, like Mike Allstott, and some of those bigger guys who played, who, who kind of really revolutionized the game as pass catchers and actual running backs instead of just blockers. Unfortunately, he was part of three Super Bowl winning teams with the Dallas Cowboys, beating the Bills in 1992 and 1993, but also winning one in 1995. Um, but that is pretty much it. I just wanted to give credit to Wikipedia for giving me some of the stats and things that came out for this. Um, and I'd also like to thank everyone who watches the video and Miss Earl.
for putting on such a great program. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank you for your time, your research, and your passion. I uh, well. hope that we have a part two coming at some point. Um, everybody, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. We're trying to make more programs available to you online. So even though we can't connect in the classroom, we can connect virtually. So I hope everyone stays safe, stay well, and we'll see you next time.